Hey guys, welcome to Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host, and today we're gonna be talking about Log9 materials, electric two-wheelers and three-wheelers, Bellatrix Aerospace's Space Taxi, the growth explosion that Ku has seen this week, Snapchat's partnership with ShareChat's Moj, Flipkart's expansion into B2B grocery, all of the latest funding news and more coming up right after this. All right, first up in the news, Log9 Materials has successfully developed what I would call an extremely disruptive battery technology, which enables people to charge electric two-wheelers in 15 minutes or less. And just to put that into perspective, the average electric two-wheeler usually takes between three and five hours to charge. Even Aether Energy scooters typically take upwards of an hour and a half to charge. But with Log9 Material batteries, you can charge a electric two-wheelers in between five and 15 minutes and electric three-wheelers in less than 30 minutes. Now you're probably thinking this is just some fast charging technology and it's gonna wear the battery out more quickly, but Log9 Materials is claiming that these batteries will last up to 15 years. Now I'm just here looking at Aether Energy's website and they're claiming that their batteries don't need to be replaced until about six or seven years. Which means that if what Log9 Materials is claiming is true, then their battery's lifespan will be more than double that of the batteries of some of India's best electric two-wheelers. Now, I don't know how you guys ride your two-wheelers, but I ride my scooter really hard. And with a battery life of 15 years, I'm pretty sure my scooter would die before the battery does. Now, I know this all sounds like it's too good to be true, but I think if we actually look at the tech inside of these batteries, then we'll realize why these batteries are so much better than traditional ones. These Log9 batteries are actually built using supercapacitor technology. These are not lithium ion batteries, they're supercapacitor batteries. And according to Log9 Materials co-founder and CEO Akshay Singhal, this is the first time that an Indian company is deploying supercapacitor technology in two-wheelers and three-wheelers. Now, something that I think happens a lot of the time with this really advanced high-end technology is that it ends up being developed and then it just sits on the shelf. But Log9 Materials has actually partnered with companies like Vogo, Shadowfax, Amazon, and Delivery to launch a two-wheeler pilot program. And if this program is a success, it could be a genuine breakthrough for India's EV industry. And the reason that I say this, and I mentioned this in last week's news video as well, is that India is currently heavily reliant upon other countries for its lithium. Lithium, of course, is the main ingredient when it comes to lithium ion batteries, which power a very, very large majority of India's electric two-wheelers, three-wheelers, and four-wheelers. And so if these supercapacitor technology batteries were to take off, then the need for lithium lithium in Indian EV batteries could be reduced. And who knows, if these batteries actually take off, then it could end up being a situation where Log9 Materials is actually exporting these batteries to other countries around the world. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts in a comment down below. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm very excited about this and I hope you guys are too. But even if you're not, I think there's one thing that we can all agree to be excited about and that's this video. So please hit the like button, it would really help us out. And if you haven't already subscribed to Backstage with Millionaires, now would be a great time to do so. We post new videos every single week about Indian startups, entrepreneurs, and the latest news. All right, next up in the news, Indian space tech startup Bellatrix Aerospace is building a space taxi. Now, I know that sounds like it's a spaceship that's designed to transport people from Earth to space and back, but unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. I think we're gonna have to wait probably until the 30s or the 40s for that to happen. So what this space taxi actually is, is a taxi for satellites. It's an orbital transport vehicle. And even though this isn't Ola cabs for astronauts, this is still a pretty big deal because Bellatrix Aerospace is the first Indian company to actually develop an orbital transport vehicle. That's an OTV. Now, I'm not gonna claim to be an expert on space tech. It's all very advanced technology. It's all very difficult to comprehend for an everyday person like myself. But I'll try to explain how OTVs work in as simple 
little away as possible. Normally, if you want to get a satellite into orbit, you have to find a rocket that's going to the same orbit or close to it. And because there are so many groups and companies that are trying to get satellites into space, you might end up having to wait years for a rocket that has room for your satellite and is also going to the same orbit as your satellite. And to make matters even more complicated, if that rocket isn't going to the exact position that you're trying to send your satellite to, then you're going to have to use precious fuel to get your satellite into the position that you want it to be in, which of course reduces its lifespan. I guess you can think of these rockets as the trains of satellite transportation. These trains are stuck on a track, and if you want to go somewhere that the train doesn't go, then you're going to have to take the train to the station nearest to where you're trying to get to, and then figure out your own transportation for the rest of the way. Now, space is a little bit different from the world we live in, so imagine if you stepped off the train station and there weren't any buses, there weren't any auto rickshaws, there was nothing. You just had to walk to wherever you were trying to go. Now imagine that there's nowhere to sleep, there's no food, and there's no water. Basically, you only have yourself to rely on. So if where you're trying to get to isn't within walking distance of the station, then reaching that place probably isn't going to be an option for you. And this is where the beauty of OTVs comes in. They are space taxis. Instead of having to walk from the train station, you and all of the other satellites that you went up in the rocket with hop onto an OTV, which takes you the rest of the way to your final destination. So Bellatrix Aerospace has actually partnered with Skyroot Aerospace to launch their OTV on its Vikram rocket in 2023. So as always, I would love to hear your thoughts in a comment down below. Like I said earlier, I am not an expert on this stuff, but I know a couple of you guys actually are. And what I really wanted to know is how is this going to impact India's position in the global market? Is this a huge leap for India or are these just baby steps? Let me know what your thoughts are in a comment down below. All right, next up in the news, Indian microblogging platform Koo has witnessed a 10x growth over the course of the last two weeks and now has more than 3 million downloads. Now, if you don't know what Koo is, the simplest way that I can explain it to you, honestly, is just to say that it's the Indian version of Twitter. And I, I hate to say that anything is the Indian version of anything else, but if you look at the logo, it's pretty clear this is, this is basically the Indian version of Twitter. The main difference, though, between Ku and Twitter is that Ku is actually focused on Indian language users. Besides English, Ku supports six Indian languages and plans on expanding to 25 in the near future. So in case you've been living under a rock for the last couple of months, there's this thing that has been going on in India for quite a while now. And it's gotten to the point now where the Indian government has actually demanded that Twitter deactivate more than 1,400 Twitter accounts and also that they reduce the visibility of certain hashtags. And initially, it looked like Twitter was taking these demands seriously. Seriously. They took down approximately 500 accounts, and they also reduced the visibility of certain hashtags. But later on, they seemed to change their mind a little bit and started to ignore some of these demands, and in certain cases, they even ended up reversing the actions that they had taken on the Indian government's behalf. Understandably, the government wasn't too happy about this, and so they sent a non-compliance notice to Twitter. This is an interesting position for the Indian government to be in because a lot of government officials are very active on Twitter. This is the case around the world. And so in response to Twitter's non-compliance, a lot of Indian government departments and officials decided to move from Twitter to coup. And of course, when an entire government department or a government official decides to move from one platform to another, their followers are going to do just that they're gonna follow them. So that's why Ku has seen this 10x growth over the last two weeks. Now, the question that's at the front of my mind, I don't know about you guys, but this is what I'm wondering, is does this mean that the Indian government is seeing Ku as a platform that will obey any and all demands that it makes? When the Indian government demanded that Twitter take down certain accounts, they often declined when those accounts were owned by news media entities, journalists, activists, and politicians. 
and they did so citing freedom of expression. And so I wonder what Indian government departments and Indian government officials moving over to Ku says about that platform and its freedom of expression. This is obviously a very contentious and sensitive subject, and I do want to hear your thoughts about it in the comments down below, but let's please try to keep things civilized. Let's treat each other with dignity and respect. I know this is the internet, but let's, let's try at least. All right, next up in the news, ShareChat's short video app Moj has become the first Indian app to partner with Snapchat to integrate its camera kit technology. Basically, Snapchat's camera kit technology is what enables the app to make face filters and AR objects and scenes look so good. And now, by partnering with Snapchat, Moj has access to that same API, that camera kit technology. This could actually be a game changer for ShareChat because competition right now in the short video app space here in India is still extremely fierce. Short Indian video apps have only been able to fill approximately 40% of the market that was left behind when TikTok was banned. However, now that they have access to Snapchat's API, this could really help Moj to capture the remaining 60% of the market from other players like MX Takatak, Inmobi's Roposo, and Daily Hans Josh. All right, so just a couple of quick updates dates before we move on to the funding news. First of all, Flipkart's B2B business Flipkart Wholesale has expanded into a new category, groceries. Basically, Flipkart Wholesale wants to become the one-stop shop for all of India's Kiranas and small retailers. The next quick update is that subscription-based milk and grocery delivery startup Daily Ninja and its parent company Big Basket have received a 231 crore rupee notice from Bengaluru-based grocery delivery platform Town Essentials. Basically, Town Essentials was signed as Daily Ninja's exclusive partner back in 2017, but according to Town Essentials, after Daily Ninja's acquisition by Big Basket in 2020, Daily Ninja hasn't been honoring their partnership or the contract that was contained within it. And the last quick update that I have for you guys before we move on to the funding news is that health and fitness startup CureFit has acquired fitness facilities aggregator Fitternity, making it the second acquisition this year for CureFit after Onyx. With this acquisition, CureFit will gain access to the more than 5,000 fitness centers and 3 million and users on Fraternity's platform. All right, moving on to some funding news now. Digital payment startup BharatPay has raised $108 million in its Series D round at a valuation of $900 million. That's just $100 million away from BharatPay becoming a unicorn from investors like Kotu Management, Ribbit Capital, Insight Partners, Steadview Capital, B Next, Amplo, and Sequoia Capital. Now, unlike a lot of other digital payments companies like Paytm, or phone pay or Google Pay, Bharat Pay is focused less on consumers and more on merchants. And so besides offering UPI-based QR code payments, they also offer loans to merchants at low interest rates. Bharat Pay is gonna be using these fresh funds to strengthen its lending business by giving $700 million worth in loans to small merchants by March of 2023. All right, next up in the funding news, one of India's latest unicorns, Verse Innovation, which is the parent company of news aggregator platform Daily Hunt, as well as short video app Josh has raised more than $100 million as part of its $200 million Series H round from investors like Qatar Investment Authority, Gladebrook Capital Partners, Ganan Valley Capital, and Sofina Group. As I just mentioned, Verse Innovation has two major platforms. Daily Hunt, which was founded in 2007 and now has more than 300 million users rating content in 14 Indian languages, as well as short video app Josh, which was founded in 2020 in an effort to capture some of the market left behind by TikTok. Verse Innovation is going to be using these fresh funds to scale Josh up by offering more content in local languages, bringing more content creators into their ecosystem, and strengthening its technology infrastructure by investing more into AI and machine learning. 
All right, next up in the funding news, cosmetics brand Sugar Cosmetics has raised $21 million at an expected valuation of more than $100 million, which would be more than double its previous valuation from investors like Elevation Capital, A91 Partners, India Quotient, and Stride Ventures. Founded in 2015, Sugar Cosmetics is a direct-to-consumer cosmetics brand which sells beauty products through an online platform as well as offline retail outlets. They currently have a presence in more than 10,000 outlets across more than 130 Indian cities, and they've managed to grow their revenue by 6x over the last two financial years. The company is hoping to expand its retail presence to over 40,000 outlets by the end of this year, and they'll also be investing into R&D to develop new products. All right, that is all the startup news that I have for you guys this week. I hope you enjoyed the video and big thanks to each and every one of you that has already hit the like button. It means a lot to us. And if you haven't already hit the like button, but you made it this far in the video, then you probably should. And if you haven't already subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. Also, as usual, I wanna send a bunch of love and appreciation to all of our Backstage with Millionaires members. That's our unicorns, as well as our decacorns. You guys are awesome. And it's support from people like you that gives us the strength to keep going even on the difficult days. And trust me, we've been doing this now for more than two years and there have been plenty of difficult days. So big thanks to all of you guys. But even if you're not a Backstage with Millionaires member, thank you so much for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires and I will see you in the next one.